Hello, and welcome to Add Value, Not Liability, Insurance Strategies to Protect the Farm Business. All right, so let's get started. There is so much opportunity in producing value-added products. Not only can it be fun and rewarding to see your products turned into something else, you're probably also doing this because you want to improve your bottom line and generate more profit. Diverse income streams can help you keep the money moving in. And then you get to capture more of the value as compared to wholesale or retail raw agricultural products. This is terrific, but let's not let the increasing legal risk of doing this erode your success. You can do this in a way that does not create more risk. And in this video, we'll focus on a single essential strategy to make that happen, and that's insurance. We will talk about what you need and how you get it. We'll also lead with the why to make sure that you appreciate what the role of insurance is in a legal framework. People often accept it as necessary, but we often don't understand the role it truly plays in terms of legal resilience. Now, you shouldn't necessarily, speaking of not accepting things that we don't truly understand, maybe you want to know who I am and why I'm qualified to talk about this. I like that suspicious nature, and I'm happy to tell you a few things about myself, your presenter. My name is Rachel Armstrong, and I'm the executive director of Farm Commons. I'm also an attorney. Farm Commons is a nonprofit exclusively dedicated to helping farmers resolve their own legal vulnerabilities within an ecosystem of support. I founded this organization so that you would have the information you need to make important decisions about your business. For 10 years now, we've crafted focused and accurate resources for farmers on farm law, and insurance is a fundamental part of that. We're excited to partner with The Land Connection to bring you this video. Okay, so why is insurance so important when it comes to legal resilience when adding value? We're going to talk about two kinds of insurance and how they work together. Property is really straightforward. You know, if your barn burns down, well, then you get money to build it, rebuild it. Most people are pretty compelled to protect their property in that way, and it makes a lot of sense. Liability insurance can seem straightforward. Someone is injured after buying your product, uh, maybe because they bit into a piece of metal while eating it, or maybe they got sick after consuming it. With insurance, people get money to compensate for their losses, medical and otherwise, when our actions make them sick or injured. But many people look at that and they say, oh, come on, how about I just produce safe food? It's not that hard to keep, you know, stray objects out of my food or to avoid injuring people. That's not wrong. And it is important to produce safe food and make sure that we are not causing other people injury. But people also say that sometimes because they don't appreciate the deeper mechanisms of how liability insurance really works. So in our next step, we're going to get in a little deeper about how liability insurance in particular plays a unique role in legal risk management. Okay, so liability is a legal concept and it centers around whether you are the person that did something wrong, something that led to this bad thing happening. And in a liability concept, um, this bad thing that happened caused injury to someone else. Sometimes it's injury to their body. Sometimes it's injury to their property. If you are the bad person, or if you are the person who did something wrong and a bad thing happened because of your actions, you are considered legally liable. And all that makes sense, you know, and that fits with our understanding of the social contract that we have with each other. But the big question becomes what does it mean to do something wrong? What is wrong anyways? Well, the most common basis for determining if an individual or a business did something wrong is the legal concept of negligence. Yet another word. Well, okay, great. What is negligence? Negligence is fundamentally the failure to do what a reasonable person would do under those same circumstances. So if you did what everyone else would have done in that situation, 
you are not considered legally negligent. Now, if you did less than what others would have done in that instance, you may be considered legally negligent. Some examples can really help us out here. So Farmer June is turning winter squash into squash cubes. A peanut falls into the hopper while she's bagging the, the frozen cubes and someone eats that peanut and has an allergic reaction. Is June liable for that? Well, as you can figure out, we, we do have to ask, how did this happen? Because we have to figure out if she did what other people would have done. Let's say that June was snacking on trail mix as the time that she was bagging. And let's say she was maybe playing catch with her dog who loves trail mix too. And so in the course of things, a peanut fell in the hopper. We would ask, would a normal person snack while bagging squash cubes? Would a normal person play with their dog in this manner while conducting this activity? And honestly, I personally do not know the answer to that question, but I do know that we would argue about it. June would say, well, come on, everybody gets hungry. Everybody snacks at work. The injured person would say, well, no one snacks in this way while they are um, at work, especially in a way that could contaminate food. Each person would haul out support and reasons for their opinion. June finds five other farmers who say, well, they always snack while they're, um, while they're doing their farm work. And the injured person, well, they drag out um, the food code and they show the regulations there that say that eating on a production line is prohibited, which they say proves that we as a society don't do that. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that being safe is not a legal risk management strategy because what's wrong, well, we don't always know what's wrong or not because we don't know what everyone else does. And even if we have a pretty good idea what everyone else does, it's hard to be perfect. If someone bites into a loose screw or trips on your barn steps while coming to purchase product, you need a defense. You need someone to say, this wasn't negligent. Everyone uses this equipment and it's not my fault that that screw came loose. Or everyone has a barn like this and it's not my fault that this customer went where they went into the roped off area. Insurance does that for you. Most policies provide an attorney who will defend you and explain why you did what everybody else does. That insurance policy also pays out on the financial part of things, the claim, if you are found liable. So keep in mind, as we as a society know, that everyone and anyone can or will be sued when someone gets hurt. That's how we figure out who is responsible. That's how we make our case that it's not me. I did what I was supposed to do. So insurance is for everyone, no matter how safe their operation is. Everyone might be called on to prove it in court, even if they did behave perfectly all the time. If you don't have insurance, you have to make your own defense or pay for your own defense and pay the resulting liability if you lose. All right, so let's say you're convinced. You're on board, you understand, great. Okay, you know, before I was thinking liability insurance um, might not be the right use of my money, but you know, now I'm gonna be safe and buy insurance. Well, the next question is naturally, what insurance do I need, particularly for a value added enterprise? Right now, you may have a homeowner's policy. Homeowner's policies are great for your home and they cover you if say you're nephew hurts himself when he is at your place for a birthday party. Or let's say that um, you have a farm liability policy. Now, a farm liability policy is often what you get when you tell your insurance agent, this isn't just a home, this is also my farm. It's great, a lot of people have it. And you know, if you host a, a farm tour one spring and somebody falls in a hole, your farm liability policy likely covers you. If your chicken feed supplier comes by and um, it, she's hauling some bags, uh, you know, outside the barn and a ladder falls on her, 
your farm liability policy probably covers you. That's because hosting a, an occasional farm tour and having a chicken feed supplier come by are considered agricultural. So our farm policy covers us. It covers us for property loss um, and uh, the injury related to the farm business activities. But a weird thing happens when we launch a value-added enterprise. Value-added enterprises are not farming anymore. And that means that they are not covered by most farm liability policies. Now, an individual farm may have some coverage for what's often called incidental business. And that is, again, for incidental conducting of value-added enterprises. But it's not going to cover a lot. If you want sustained coverage for a value-added enterprise, you're going to have to get something extra, something above and beyond the plain Jane farm liability policy. Now, what you need in your instance, you, you definitely have to have a talk in depth with an insurance agent or a broker about what you're doing. But I'm gonna to describe to you some trends. And when we, uh, after we describe these trends, we'll touch on how to find and communicate with that insurance person. Oftentimes, a farm might get a business endorsement to cover value-added enterprises. So farming and business, you gotta think of this as two different things. Business is commercial food production or retail sales. Farming, of course, is farming. Um, and a business endorsement can cover you for some business activities, largely those that are conducted on the farm. And they can be tucked into your farm liability policy through an endorsement. However, most business endorsements don't extend to any production off the farm or sales that occur off the farm. So if you're making dried fruit on your farm, this might work. If you're making dried fruit in a commercial kitchen, a business endorsement probably won't, won't work. Similar with making sales. If the sales are on the farm, perhaps business endorsement. If the sales are at the farmer's market, this, that might not work. You're gonna need something more for those off-farm instances. Okay, so what's the something more? Scaling up to a commercial policy sometimes called commercial liability insurance or things along that line, think of commercial as business that isn't farming. These are policies that are formulated specifically for individual activities. Like there's one policy that's for fruit and vegetable distributors and another policy that's for food manufacturing. It's hard to say exactly which one you're going to need in, in, in the insurance agent or broker's um, you know, wisdom and, and, and experience, they will be able to, to discern, um, you know, whether your, your dried fruit operation um, is this or that, or your jam making operation. So you got to work closely with an agent or a broker to see which of the available commercial policies will really fit the kinds of activities that you're engaged in. Now, before we leave this subject, let's review again why we're doing this. Let's say someone eats your jam that they purchase at the farmer's market and later believes that you somehow made them sick and then files a lawsuit against you. If all you've got is a farm liability policy, maybe even with an incidental business endorsement, the policy might not cover you. That means you have no defense from that claim and no ability to pay out if you lose. You gotta defend yourself and so you need a policy, an insurance policy that covers value-added enterprises. Okay, so what kind of coverage can you expect? You know, if you put the dollars on the table and you buy this thing, what are you gonna get? Well, you know, a business endorsement, again, farming and business are considered two different things. So these cover you for business activities on the farm. Um, so let's see here, a couple of broad categories um, of that they're, that they're going to cover. Slip and fall, for sure. Well, oh, I take that back, never ever say for sure. So, but slip and fall is the injury that people are usually thinking about that insurance policies are designed to cover. 
um, take my example of the feed supplier that has a ladder fall on her, those kind of things. The tour participant who falls in a hole. Foreign object is another phrase for type of coverage that is very often provided in, in um, commercial and, um, and business endorsements. Foreign objects are things that fall into your food. Um, you know, whether you're putting together a pancake mix and, and um, you know, a net lands in there or you're, um, you're manufacturing something and a piece of metal or glass falls in. Those are usually covered. A lot of times though, when people are thinking about what really keeps them up at night, they're thinking about food safety injuries. They're thinking about E. coli, salmonella, other of those biological contaminants that make people sick. Now, unfortunately, a, a, a plain Jane commercial policy and a business endorsement very often do not cover food safety issues. You need something very specific to food safety to get coverage for that. And of course, yes, that comes with additional costs. Food safety coverage itself, it gets you expanded um, coverage for things like doing a recall of your product, resetting your machinery, cleaning the thing out, this you know, bug, um, and, and getting ready to go again, in addition to providing the injured person with compensation. Food safety liability policies can be difficult to find and difficult to afford, especially for anyone operating on a, on a small farm level. Do ask about it though. The more people that ask, the more the industry will realize that there is demand for these and start to provide them at a cost um, that is competitive and reasonable. Okay, how do we find this coverage? Um, let's talk about that. I've been referring to the insurance agent and the broker. What's the difference? An agent tends to represent one insurance company and a broker tends to sell from a variety of companies. That is not the big issue though for small scale farming and adding value. What you really need there is a special someone who has seen small farming and value added before, whether they're an agent or a broker. Your best bet is gonna be someone who understands the thing that you're doing. How do you find that person? Number one, ask other farmers. If they have an insurance agent that they trust and feels understands their operation, they're a great place to start. Check uh, conference exhibitors and vendor booths at uh, farmer gatherings. See if there are any um, insurance companies that are holding themselves out as, as suitable for farmers. Call your local associations, nonprofit organizations, and extension educators to see if you can get a line on someone that is experienced in serving farm businesses. And then the most important thing that you can do is develop a relationship with this person that will hopefully serve you for years to come. Some of the best ways that you can communicate with your insurance agent to help develop that relationship is to tell them everything you're doing. What is it that you're making? Maybe you're grinding flour now, but you would like to uh, make pancake mix later. Tell them, is this all your product or are you also buying in grains from someone else or buying in flour? And don't stop at just the, the, the bulk of the product. What about you're making scone mix and are you buying in dried fruits? Make sure to lay out on the table where your product is coming from and the, all the instances of what you're making. Where are you selling it? Let them know. Is it at the farmer's market, from your farm? Are you making home deliveries? What are you doing now? And what are you hoping to do in the near future so that you can get a policy you can grow with? To whom are you selling? Are these wholesale or retail sales? Now that should get you a lead on a good policy that will work for you from this individual, but you have gotta ask questions yourself. Bring up those possibilities of expansion into other product areas. Raise those instances of contamination that worry you. Spell out your worst nightmares and your mundane, unlikely but possible issues and see what they say. Insofar as you can, consider communicating in writing so that you have a record and something to go back to if you forget. And the bottom line is shop around. The first agent or broker you talk to, you just might not connect with them and they might not be giving you the attention you really need, there are other people who will be willing to have your business.
And that's it. You can do this. You know your business. You are the customer who is looking to buy a product. You can shop around. You can ask questions and let that insurance agent or broker earn your business. Insurance is so important. Don't let this one go. You can do it. And our last word is, of course, a thanks to the funder. You can read the statement here for the, uh, for the um, uh, funding avenues that made this possible. Thanks so much.